Welcome back everyone to our Become a WordPress Developer course. Today we'll be looking at WordPress functions and the best way to learn what a function is is to dive right into the code. So let's jump into our text editor and open our index.php file that we worked on last lesson. So let's go ahead and delete the first line here and let's enter into PHP mode. If any of this is new to you make sure to look back at the previous videos for this course. So remember from a lesson or two ago, we learned about echo, which allows us to output. And we could do something like three plus three, save it. We could go back into our website, open it. So here we see the answer. That should jog our memory with working with PHP. So let's look at our first function. Let's go ahead and delete this line. First, we write out the keyword function, and we could give it a name, our first function. So the name doesn't matter, we just choose our name. Next, we just open and close parentheses, and next, curly brackets, opening and closing. And then in between them, we drop down to a new line, just to, it looks nicer, more organized. And then within here, we can do the same thing, tell it to echo three plus three. So if we save this, we go back, open, you'll see we don't get our answer. We don't see anything, and that's because our code is a function definition. All we did was take the task of adding 3 plus 3, and we gave it a name, our first function. So a function definition is just a description of an action or task, but it doesn't actually run it. In order to run it, below our function definition, we simply call our first function by saying our first function and then parentheses semicolon save so now if we refresh we do get our six so we called our function so this would be defining a function and this is calling the function what's cool is that we can take the function and use it over so we could repeat it save it and then open it and this can look confusing because it looks like 66 but really it's just the number six no spacing and then the number six again so let's try something more clear in our function instead of echoing three plus three let's do a string of text and in there we can add an h1 first function close it out let's make sure to add our semicolon now if we save this refresh and we do see it we see it twice because we did call it twice so we only have to define the function once and we can reuse it over and over as you can see so now that we learned how to define and run a function let's erase these so let's give ourselves a goal here let's say we have two paragraphs Hi, my name is Jay and I like pet dogs. Hi, my name is Bob and I like pet cats. So when I say we want to create these two paragraphs, we don't want to just type them in here. Since these sentences are so similar, what if we create a function that'll take these paragraphs? Let's try to create a single function that can generate both these paragraphs. So let's delete these. Let's create a new function. Good to erase and retype just to get used to typing out those functions. Function then our name, we'll call it greet. Don't forget parentheses and then opening and closing curly brace. Then we're gonna echo a bit of text. So outputting text is usually referred to a string and we use quotes and in between we add our string of text. So let's start a paragraph tag, close it out. And in between, hi, my name is blank and I like pet blank and don't forget a semicolon then below our function definition we'll call it once for J and once for Bob so we save refresh we see the two paragraphs now we just need to find a way to pass information about J and Bob into our function so check it out when we first call the function let's say we passed in j and here we would put bob so then in our function definition what if we add a dollar symbol and remember from our earlier lessons this is how we create a variable we 
call it name. Remember, this can be anything that you want it to be. You could create your own variable name, but it makes sense. It makes sense to use the variable name. So what it's going to do is create a variable that we can use within our function. So we can use this dollar sign name wherever we want inside our function. So now we could change this blank here with dollar symbol name. So let's save it. Come over here and refresh. We have hi, my name is Jay and I like pet blank. Hi, my name is Bob and I like pet blank. So let's review what's going on. When we call the function twice, this little bit of data, J and Bob, those are called arguments. And within our function call, we can provide it multiple arguments. So right after J and Bob, let's add a comma and do dog. It can be birds. So we save it. So if we're calling the function and giving it two arguments, we need to make sure our function definition is ready for those two parameters or arguments. So we already have one for name. After that, we would add a comma and do dollar sign pet or favorite pet. And remember, we can make that name up. What's important is now we can use dollar sign favorite pet within our function call. So here, favorite pet. Save and refresh. And we do see it was passed in properly. We see my name is Jay and I like pet dog. My name is Bob and I like pet birds. That's how we can create our own function and use parameters to receive incoming arguments so that our function can be flexible. So let's tie all this back to WordPress. The beauty about WordPress is that WordPress comes with many functions that we can use in our own website. We get to come along and run those functions the same way we called these functions. So for example, let's go out of PHP. Let's imagine we have large headline and this will be our overall website's name or title. So WordPress has a pre-built function that'll give us our site name. Check this out. In between our H1s, let's go into PHP mode and close it and then in between here we call the function blog info so this is a pre-built function pre-written by wordpress that we can use within our code so this was created and defined by wordpress and it gives us information about our site within our parentheses we let wordpress know what we're looking for we can add name don't forget your semicolon to let php know we're done with this task save it go into our site and we do see uni university so if you're wondering where this came from let's go into wp admin and towards the bottom if you go to settings general we see site title that's the name of our website so if we call this something else like best university and we save it and then we go back and refresh we do see the name reflected back to our code we didn't create blog info, but WordPress created it and allows us to use it. The cool thing is we don't need to understand how WordPress does this, talking to the database, finding the name of the website, bringing it back, WordPress abstracts, all that detail. So we don't have to worry about it. All we have to do is run the function. And that's a majority of custom WordPress development. It's just a matter of knowing the different functions you have at your disposal and then running them at the right place and at the right time. So let's try one more example before we finish this lesson. Let's imagine under here we want a paragraph that has our slogan or tagline so that you know what I'm talking about. If we go back over here, we have our tagline. We can change this back and then give it best diversity in the galaxy let me come out here save changes go back give ourselves a opening and closing paragraph inside of there so if we want to dynamically output our tagline in between this paragraph we drop into php mode close php mode and in the middle we'll call blog info and we'll give it the argument of description and semicolon save it then refresh we see back uni university best university in the galaxy now if we were to change it in the future 
planet, save, back, our front end will always display the correct value. So now at this point, you're at least a little familiar with what a function is. Now we only have one more topic to go over before we can really dive into WordPress, and that's going to be arrays. So what in the world is an array? Understanding arrays is what's going to start allowing us to display actual WordPress content onto the front end of our site, like posts, pages. It's going to be a lot of fun. Hope to see you there.